All right, so we're going to get a little bit into the task scheduler here today to try to get a better understanding of how it works and how to write a little better code to interact with that. So right here we have a little example where we have a function, we're going to pretend it's processing user inputs, then we have another one that's going to update the camera. This is a common pattern I see to run these sort of systems. You see a while true do, some methods or functions that you call, some, some sort of code, and then a wait. Now this works, it will run your code, but it's not ideal. And, you know, there's a lot of debate on wait being reliable or not. I believe it is nowadays, but it's still not ideal. And there's a couple problems here. The biggest one is we have no control as to when this code runs within the task scheduler. And the reason that's important is, you know, we might need it to run at a specific point based on what's happening in the engine. Without that control, it's hard to know when and where this is going to run. And we might get things that are off by a frame and things like that, and that's not ideal. Plus, there's no guarantee necessarily that wait is always going to be just one frame. Just to get something else out of the way first, never do this. I see a lot of developers doing this. This is really bad. The reason for this being bad is because you're relying on the fact that wait returns a number, which is a truthy value. So this will resolve as a true condition. So while wait technically doesn't fail, and then we continue on and we get our yield there. So people are like, oh, that's fancy. This is really bad. If for whatever reason the implementation of wait changed and it no longer returned a number, let's say it just returned nothing or nil, then this condition is going to fail immediately and the loop will never run. Now imagine if you have hundreds of these throughout your games, all of a sudden they make a change of wait and all of your code stops working. You want full control of the condition. You don't want some other you know, global function controlling that. That could change at any time. So don't put that there because again, we, we have no guarantee that weight is always going to return a truthy value. It could change, who knows? Probably won't, but it could. And that alone should be reason enough to never do that. Plus it's hard to read. Like what does this mean while weight do? It's not clear. If someone didn't really understand what weight did, then it returned a value. It'd be very confusing. It's bad code for many reasons. So make your conditions explicitly understandable and match why it's doing what it is. A while true do loop is very common in the world to be understood as forever. <laughs> do this forever, that's understood. So make sure your code is clean. But either way, I'm gonna get rid of all of this because I think this is bad. Again, we, we lose track of where this is within the task scheduler pipeline. Um, so let's jump over to the task scheduler documentation, take a look. So just to kind of read through this really quick, you know, the task scheduler coordinates tasks done each frame as the game runs, even when the game is paused. These tasks include detecting player input, animating characters, updating the physics simulation, and resuming scripts in a wait state. Ideally, if we scroll down, this is kind of a layout of what happens every frame in order. Now, it does make a caveat. Uh, some of these tasks may not perform work in a frame, while others may run multiple times. Anyway, let's look at the scheduler. So each frame this is the order of operations of things happening. So the very first thing is that user inputs are processed. So key pushes, mouse pushes, screen taps, etc. all those are gonna be processed for the user input service. So the very first thing is handling user input. Now next is rendering. So anything bound to the render step or the render step event are gonna be fired and then internally the screen will be drawn. So you can imagine if you want anything that's going to be locked to the camera or influenced by having to be smoothly moved or animated, you're going to want to do that somewhere in this process. And then we get some replication stuff, and then we see our scripts are resumed at this state. That should give you a red flag right away in terms of right here, we have an update camera, but we're locked to this wait right here. That's happening here which is after the screen is drawn. If you have ever done this, what you'll realize is anytime you're trying to update the camera just using a wait loop, you're always gonna have a lot of jittering happen. The reason for that is because you're a frame off. It's updating your camera state after the render. So you're not gonna see it until the next render comes back through, which is gonna be the next frame. So you get that jittering because you're a frame off. 
Okay, the next step is little garbage collection. So these, this is one of the things that not gonna happen every frame. Simulation job, so this is again an area we can step into using stepped. So this is gonna be things as it shows that the animators run and things like that. And we can link into stepped here. And then right after stepped is an internal physics step. Anytime we want to update things like body movers or velocities or things that deal with physics, it's ideal to use stepped. After the simulation job, we have heartbeat. Heartbeat is always a good one. I use this for most things, especially for you know user input handling and things of that nature. We're actually gonna switch over to some of these here, specifically heartbeat and render step, or bind to render step. And I'm gonna kind of show also another benefit of that. We're gonna get rid of this here. And we'll talk a little bit about this afterwards again too, why another reason this is not good. We're going to pull in the user input service and then instead of this while true do loop, all we have to do is user input service. Oh, this is the wrong service. Run service, of course. So run service dot heartbeat connect process user input. So instead of having to write a whole loop here, all I have to do is connect a function to heartbeat. And now this is completely bound to this part of our scheduler. So we can be sure that any time heartbeat fires, it's gonna run right here in our scheduler. So we, we can make good assumptions as to where in our task this is going to be executed. So we might do some processing on user input there and then update camera. We're not gonna use heartbeat for that because again, that happens after our render state. So we wanna do that within either bind to render step or render step. I prefer to use bind render step because you can add priorities within that to kind of sort them. So if you have a lot of render step functions going on, you can kind of stack them in the specific order you need using uh, the render priority. And that's kind of demonstrated in the text there. So we could do run service bind to render step. You give it some name, a render priority, and then a function. But then just like that, now we've bound this function to the rendering process right here. So anytime we make changes to the camera or make animations that are custom, whatever, this is gonna be seen immediately right after because our screen draw is right next. So we can be sure that if we want things to be nice and silky smooth as they show up, uh, as long as we have that bound properly, that'll work just fine. Again, because we don't have any layering going on, I don't really care about it being right after the camera. We could use just the event render step, but it, just again, the, the render priority here is important because for instance, the core scripts that run the camera by default are bound to this value right here. So if you wanted code to be based upon the current camera position, so for instance, maybe you're trying to lock a 3D part with the camera, then you're gonna to wanna to make sure that this value is above the camera value. So you could do like just plus one there. You could just do last. There's a few named render priorities, but at the end of the day, this is just a number that I assume just uses like a sort. But yeah, we, we can just use that instead. But again, we could just use render step in this case too, just for the sake of example. And now we have good event-driven programming too. And that's the, this next la or last piece about why I don't like this while true do loop is we're completely killing our code right here. Our code will never get down here. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, but it, it does become really frustrating as your code base gets larger, gets more complex. Things like this are just not ideal. You don't want your code just freezing up in one spot like that all the time. Plus, how do I stop this? What if this is running within some sort of module that I might want to cancel at some point? If that's the case, then I've got to do all sorts of things. I've got to make a variable instead, call it run loop, and somehow I've got to control this variable outside of this loop and at some point make it false. Well, how do I do that? You know, you end up with a lot of code jargon just to handle that, and that's not ideal. So what's really nice about these events is that they return event connections or handlers. So we could say like a heartbeat handle, for the sake of length, I'll just say HB handle. And then here, our handle, render handle. And these are script connections, right? 
all we have to do is disconnect them in order to stop. So that's kind of nice. We can very quickly stop any or both of these loops immediately at any time. And our code reaches down here. So we might do some other stuff. And at some point we want to clean up this code and stop these functions from running. All we have to do is disconnect. And just like that, our loops stop. So that's really powerful because now all of a sudden we have full control over when and how these are running and when they're gonna stop. That's really powerful and a really good pattern to follow in order to very easily spool things up and clean things up as necessary. Plus it's cleaner. You know, I don't have a bunch of while loops everywhere. This is honestly, for me, a lot easier to read. I understand what's going on here. And again, we get better understanding into when and where our code is running because we have these events. Now, a quick caveat is that these names are eventually going to change here soon, and we're getting another one too. So as I can see from this uh, issue right here, render stepped is being renamed as pre-render, stepped is being named as pre-simulation, heartbeat is post-simulation, and we're also getting a pre-animation step as well. So these are just renames, but they are running in the same spot. And then we get an extra one as well. So these are not currently released yet. They kind of tried to or something and then rolled it back. I'm not really sure what happened, but eventually they'll be renamed. So in case people are seeing this in the future and you're like, whoa, I've never seen these render stepped or heartbeats before. And that's because they were renamed. At the moment of recording, these are still the old names, but eventually they'll be renamed as such.